welcome to episode 26 of my knitting podcast. My name is Marlene and if you've been here before you know that, but if you're new here, welcome to my knitting and vlogging channel. Um, I will be talking about all the things that I have recently finished making and all the things that I am currently knitting, mostly knitting on, um, and what I like to be knitting on next. <laughs> Um, I'm wearing my Judy sweater by Gregoria Fibers. I test knitted this for her at the beginning of this year and the yarn was sponsored by Isager. Isager? Isager. Isager. Yeah, I think it was the Jensen and the Alpaca something. I'm not sure. I actually have some left over so I might be, depending on if it's enough, might be making a slip over with it. I feel the crave and the need for slipovers, but I haven't made the time for them recently. And so I hope to be making some time for them within the next couple of weeks and months. Um, but yeah, I adore this sweater. It's one of my favorite sweaters. And I also really like the yarn, but like I said, it was sponsored, but that really doesn't change my opinion about it. It's just, it pills very little. I love the texture that um, the designer has created with this and yeah I was really happy to test this for her but I'm also wearing something jewelry-esque and I'm not particularly a very jeweled person I don't I wear some very tiny golden earrings and sometimes a, a gold necklace some like really small and like t toned down uh, rings uh, but this necklace is kind of a statement for me it is in many ways because it was made by my friend Emma who has the um, usually or mostly stitch marker um, Etsy shop but she's also been venturing into jewelry for some time now and she's just dropped yesterday so I'm sorry this video hasn't been kind of within that schedule so she, I think she's sold out meant most of the things she has just put up but I'm very sure that there will be a next time and so maybe you should just follow her and um, on Instagram and Etsy so this was gifted uh, to me from her <laughs> she actually picked out this one for me because I could not decide between the three versions that she had uh, one had more some like a bit more mixed up beads some lavender shades and then the other one had basically also oranges but with green which I loved but also some clear gems which I was not sure if I'd like that so I was <laughs> completely unable to choose and she see up and so she chose for me it was actually the same necklace that my friend Lydia also has uh, and got from Emma at the same time she gave it to us at Barcelona Knits which was so nice you so we we're all matching we actually took a picture and we all look very jeweled um, by Emma's um, beautiful handmade um, jewelry so yeah it's, it's kind of like a friendship necklace in that way and yes yeah, so I, I really like it I think it looks great with this sweater and I think it's um, yeah it's just the colors I really like and love and so I was really happy that she helped me choose because like I said I couldn't there were so many other nice ones and I also bought a row counter in her shop update yesterday just because I've been wanting a row counter for some months now um, I actually had that period where I was knitting on six sleeves like right after one another and I was like I need a row counter and I wanted a, a nice one with some gems stones charms things in comparison to having one that I could do like a clicky sound we have those at the shop too but I was like I want something that is attached to my project sorry that was a really long introduction of what I am wearing yeah, like I said I wanted to make it clear that I was gifted this necklace but not in like a, a corporation sent me something but a friend gifted me this and now I wanted to get into my finished objects because there are three of them there are two extremely exciting ones, very um, 
matchy, mix and match, very scrappy even, if you would say that, which I think is a beautiful way to end the year kind of on, like a beautiful note to end the year on. And then one pretty basic, but let me start with a basic one so we end on high uh, when it comes to my finished objects. My first finished object I just finished two days ago on my partner's birthday. And so this is a cowl, which was self-drafted. Um, it's a four by four cowl. It is made in, um, I think it's Arbor from a Miss American Targi wool. And it is from Brooklyn Tweed, I think. Yeah, I got a couple of skeins in the, um, in the sales section at the Nick Cozy Tea Cozy, the Tea Cozy yarn shop in Seattle. Sorry, I was uh, brain twisted. And I made this one with two skeins of the, I mean, I actually used like 66 grams. So I've got a bit of this left over. Uh, like I said, I did self draft it, but with uh, well looking at two patterns. I've got everything, like all the information I've got linked on my uh, Ravelry page, but I looked at the Eric's Cowl by uh, the knit, no, the Crazy Sock Lady, Kay Litton. And then I looked at the, I think, sorry, I didn't write this down, but like I said, it's linked in my Ravelry page. It's something simple yet effective, I think it was called. It's a cowl um, project by Tin Can Knits. And this actually looks nothing like the tin can knits, but I, um, I think I got closer to the gauge and the yarn weight of that one, and then but I knitted it the way that Kay knitted it in the other one. So I was inspired by both. At the end, I used my own stitch count and my own kind of like pattern repeat. It's not like a pattern; it's a rib. But I think Kay has six. Um, both are free patterns, so. You can look at them both and then kind of make up your own pattern too. She used a six by two rib. I did a four by four, uh, which both numbers would be dividable by the same number. So I am, I have all my notes in my project page. So you could basically recreate this. And like I said, because the other patterns are free as well, I thought that was no problem. Um, I made this for him. I might, I can actually put it on or should I? No, I'm going to put up. I don't want to mess up my hair. Uh, I can put up a picture of him wearing this. Uh, like I said, I had finished this on, on his birthday, actually. He got some socks that I showed you before, and he got this cowl and some other stuff. We actually went to um, the spa for a day to, like, a, a sauna. Um, I, again, don't know the English word, but we went to a Therme in Germany, <laughs> um, and we had a wonderful day there. And like I said, he got some small knitted gifts and some other yummy gifts. And this was one of them. And he hasn't been able to wear it out because it hasn't been cold enough. But this afternoon, we're actually going to go to his family's place and having some cake and uh, dinner um, in our honor of his birthday. Um, and um, it actually my mother-in-law, she called and she was saying that it's snowing there already, which is so exciting for me. I love snow. Um, and so maybe he might be wearing this today and then I might get some actual decent pictures because this is so dark. I don't know if you can tell, but this is like a very dark chocolatey brown color. I hope that it will show up actually. And yeah, I think it looks beautiful on him. It is just for him to be able to um, like scooch over his head like a, a loop shawl and then he'll just be able to have it's kind of like a, a separate roll up neck but without the sweater <laughs> so like I said I made him this regular sweater which is a crew neck and this way he will be able to have a warm neck uh, even with a regular sweater and he's not a shawl person so he wouldn't want something that's like really big wrapped around his neck but this, I think, will be a good, like, in between. Uh, so, yeah, I put the amount of yarn that I used, which was, I think, 66 gram, gram of grams of a DK weight yarn. Uh, this is, like I said, an American Targi wool. 
and I used something like 100 and something, I think 12 stitches, and I did four by four for 26, 27 centimeters. And then I folded it in half and I did a regular bind off. And I think that's it. It's a really easy project. It still took me about a week to tin it up just because it was a lot of four by four rib. But yeah, I was knitting on it um, every now and then. And I was really happy that he liked it when he got it. Let me get a zip of my tea and then move on to my next finished object. Okay. My next finished object has just been released yesterday and it's the Stella Quilt Cushion. I like how Laura did that and I also like kung fuing my pillows. Not sure if that's the right term, but yeah, I like to do that. This is the Stella Quilt Cushion. It has been, um, I've tested this for Laura Penrose uh, in a Sanders Garden double Sunday. I think the color was a marzipan, um, merino, and some DK. So this is mostly hand dyed. Some of them were a DK weight already and some of them I held double. Actually, I can try and <laughs> Um, make up which colors are what but I also have an Instagram post about this where I've linked all the um, colorway names but yeah let's just start up here this and that those are knitting for olive merinos held double I think this was autumn and this was some kind of brown color which I can't remember what it is called and I um, I will have to dig in my uh, ball bands <laughs> to find it and then put it in the description box down below. This is Macross by Explorinus and Fibers. This is in their Rockies DK base. And then this is the Daybreak, which was a leave no trace gain. So it's a bit, uh, it's not completely even like the usual Daybreak would be. So these are Rockies DK Explorinus and Fibers. Then this is the Pumpkin Spice by Olivia and Oliver Fibers in the Merino DK again. And this is Dusty Honey uh, Knitting for Olive Merino Held Double again. Terracotta in the um, Merino DK by Olivia and Oliver Fibers. And then Hot Cocoa in the Merino DK by Olivia and Oliver Fibers. So this is a mixture of Exploring this and Fibers Knitting for Olive and Olivia and Oliver fibers and I love it. These all have been made into other projects. The Knitting for Olive I got on my Copenhagen trip with Emma to put into my sweet shop blanket which has not <laughs> grown since uh, the last um, episode actually just because I was working on this so much. Um, so this still has not um, grown since then but it has the um, dusty honey and the, um, the hot cocoa and the pump pumpkin spice it also has in here and as you can see both are made in the same Sanders Garin double Sunday, which I think is so nice because then they're matching and wherever they will um, live <laughs> right now they're both on my uh, couch uh, or on my um, on my chair here in my living room uh but yeah it's just super nice i've gotten so many compliments about this and again i wanted to say uh thank you so much so many people uh have told me that they really like my version which is obviously really nice and um yeah <laughs> i was really happy because it did take up like two weeks of very intense focus knitting i was so happy that um Laura asked me to test knit this because she had, for some reason, heard me um, enthusiastically talk about this, uh, maybe on the podcast or wherever, but uh, she must have, through some coincidence, heard of me <laughs> really like gushing about it and asked me if I wanted to test knit it. And honestly, I think 
so her version was obviously beautiful like in this woolly mammoth fibers and in my opinion hers is like the spring colors and mine is like the little autumnal brother of that cushion because like they're so similar in a way but also literally the exact opposite seasons and i love that like hers is so springy and i love the color colors she she chose i obviously just wanted to use stash yarn which i'm so happy that i'm using up so many of my let me show you my this is my um <laughs> my what would you call that my scrap stash i have more scraps but they are not um enough um like yardage i would say these are all at least uh, five to i think 10 grams let me just squish it in here so i'm so happy that i got to use some of my scrap stash to put into that um cushion and like honestly i'm just so proud <laughs> proud of the the way I I made I made it because like it isn't difficult she has very clear instructions in the pattern I'm really happy with the pattern and how she she did uh, word it and put it but still it was something new to do and lots of ends to weave weave in and um lots of German short rows which I don't mind in any way shape or form but it was just something new I hadn't done a cushion or any homeware except for my two started blankets and yeah I'm just uh, really happy to be using my scraps in such a in such a beautiful way um, and yeah so this is this is part of my um, or the biggest part of my stash my scraps uh, hand dyed scraps and so yeah I hope to be <laughs> sewing or weaving in some of the ends on my cozy comfort throw soon because that's getting out of hand and I think I want to be knitting on that in advent um, time just because it is a gutter just right to left right like knit stitches um, and that would be nice I think to have a very mindless project but also to weave in some ends every now and then maybe I can do like a do one color of like knit in one color a day and then also weave in like two rounds two rows of ends that would be nice so yeah that was my second finished object and i'm obviously in love with it and now for my second finished object it's another scrappy project and it is my swatch bag by maria I think it's her name. Um, this is another pattern. All of these patterns you can find on Ravelry. Most of them I think are paid for patterns, but um, they're obviously linked with my Ravelry project pages. Um, this is also another very proud moment for me because I this is my first uh, project where I put my knitting journey and my sewing journey together and you can see on here on the inside that I have put in a lining and also put in my uh, label and yeah I'm, I'm just thinking that this is showing off some of the there's actually a hand wound um, unspun <laughs> yarn ball in there but I'm, I'm gonna take that out um, you can actually see, I mean, this is the swatch of the sweater that I'm currently wearing. Uh, this is one that has never come to fruition, that has never made its way on my needles. Uh, this was for the September sweater. That's my first and only ever brioche little gauge swatch. Um, but maybe I'll get to it uh, next year. And yeah, I have talked about most of these in my last episode I think but I just wanted to say that I did finish it off with a heavy merino plus soft silk for hair so a, a knitting for olive basically knitting for olive um, kind of like cord lining I'm not sure what the correct word for this is 
yeah but and, and then I threaded my cords through these are just some really simple cotton thicker cotton straps I would say that I got from Sustina Gena when I went to Copenhagen again I got some sewing um, things there and yeah I, I just have been using these for all my um, project bags that I've been sewing and then the lining gosh that was a journey and a half <laughs> it wasn't easy to do I don't know if you will be able to see uh, it went okay but this was my second trial <laughs> and then sewing it in wasn't the easiest but I'm just I'm just very happy that I have it now I've been using it uh, just as any regular old project bag like I said this has been my traveler cardigan project bag and um, I've taken it uh, away with me when we went um, out uh, for a night over in a, in a tiny house that we just did for my partner's birthday and um, yeah I, I just really like having it with me it's the softest most squishiest project bag that I own for sure and I'm just very proud of it and I would very much urge you to do gauge swatches in the first place if you're unsure about the gauge if you're pretty sure and it doesn't really matter if it's like a stitch more or less you don't have to obviously but I like to do some to I don't know get excited for the project there's actually a gauge swatch in here that I I did the gauge swatch and I have the yarn laying there but I have not been able to start the project this is my my Harlow v-neck that one of my lovely viewers has gifted that pattern to me and it's definitely gonna be my next sweater cast on but I just haven't t taken found whatever the time to cast it on but it's already in here and so this is a, a huge motivation for me to start and so yeah my swatch bag which is so cute <laughs> and I love it and I hope you make one too like I said um I have the exact amounts of gauge swatches that I needed. It really depends on size. And I think it's a good thing to have some bigger and some smaller sized ones to make up uh, like a mosaic kind of look uh, that I also achieved with mine. Um, and you could also use uh, a full one down here or maybe use, I've thought about, I think Bethany from Well Love Knits used one of her uh, felted projects as like a bottom for a project bag like this which I think she used like a, a fabric sewn around it so you could just just keep your mishap mishappened projects your your gauge what just keep them because you can make something beautiful with them and keep your scraps like five to ten gram scraps you can make so much nice things with them and you could make some more swatches if you didn't do them in the first place which there's no shame in doing that if you're okay with frogging and ripping back and yeah, just doing it along the way. I think you can get some beautiful shaped and sized and fitting projects if you're just weary or like aware of gauge during the project. If you don't do a gauge swatch, I think that can still work out fine. So yeah, whatever. I've been talking about this a lot. I love it. I still haven't posted like finished object pictures of the thing on my Instagram I, I don't know why sometimes I get like this week I, I did kind of like a away from Instagram some time away from from social media just for my for my anxiety and um and just sometimes find it and that is such a like for first world problem first like first of all it's not a real problem but like I don't know if you also have felt this but like if you've made something and you love it like there's nothing you would change here you adore it you hope to keep it forever you hope to never lose it like or it like breaking or anything but then capturing that in like just one tiny ass picture is not very easy i feel like just because it, it couldn't encapsulate how you feel about the thing so i've i've had this with these last two finished project where i was like how am i gonna capture this in a picture and probably realizing that you might not and that's okay and you don't have to post on Instagram like in the first place but I like to and so yeah 
we'll see if this is ever gonna see the Instagram feed because I'm not sure if I am able to capture its beauty in just a regular old picture. But yeah. Okay, second, no, third finished object. And like seeing my scrappy project there is just making me so happy. I love like the look, I just love the patchwork look. Great. Okay, let's move on to my <laughs> my saga of the single socks. I've posted about this on Instagram and it is actually making me laugh. I have three single socks here and I'm uh, working on finishing a fourth one uh, at work. Although I'm, I've not been at work for a couple of days since I am on vacation kind of. Uh, for a couple of days and yeah so these are my single finished socks i'm not sure if i've showed you this uh as a finished sock this is the pedal drop sock by um florence miller by handmade by florence this is the aviva sock from lydia rababa and this is a self kind of like self-drafted vanilla sock um although no it's not self-drafted i'm using the sunday sock recipe by Petit Knit and I have um, kind of changed up needle size and stitch count so and this is in Atelier Citron or in German we just say Atelier Citron um, although now that I have just said that I'm not sure if we pronounce it that way because I've been thinking and speaking in English for a half an hour uh, but yeah it's the tweed trekking tweed in a six ply sock yarn so I used a 3.5 millimeter needle for this and these are going to be my Christmas socks and I've casted a second one on of these so this is going to be my first finished pair and they have these lovely red and green and blue and yellow so just the primary colors as tweeds speckles in this light gray sock. With the Aviva sock I used the Deep Breath Before the Plunge colorway by Long Dog Yarn um, from her Lord of the Rings collection. And it marls beautifully and I think it goes quite well with the like um, little floral-esque motifs that she has um, decided on putting in the in the pattern which is broken up by these like um, broken I think it's broken rib stitches um, and I really like the detail of having the contrast color uh, in the toe and the heel uh, and also like that too I think that was was it the Frodo or the Gandalf colorway I'm not sure I'm gonna put it or it's going to be in my Ravelry project but overall this sock set was called Deep Breath Before the Plunge and that is uh, this scene before the big fight uh, in Gondor where I think it is Pippin and uh, Gandalf speaking the, about the whole situation then Pippin is singing I mean big Lord of the Rings fan but I'm like I don't know each and every sequence like off the top of my head but I'm pretty sure that's it and finally my pedal drop socks are made out of the cotton colorway in the um, regular sock base by Olivia and Oliver and I just really like the tonality of this and it's a beautiful beginner um, beginner um, sorry lace pattern my head just there froze up and yeah, so I'm going to, each and every single one is going to get a mate uh, within the next weeks. Like I said, I'm starting with this one just because I want these to be my Christmas socks. And then um, I had to finish one for the test knit. I test knitted this for my friend Lydia. And so uh, giving her the feedback on that just one sock is enough for now. So I can make the second one whenever I want. And the same with this. I just needed a break on the lace socks for a second. And this one I just knitted up during breaks when I was at Barcelona Knits. So yeah, the Grow sock is also going to get finished for now. I'm just going to finish that one 
because it's for the shop and I can make a second one, like I said, whenever. Okay, so my next work in progress is actually has not gotten any or really a lot of work on. It is uh, the hipster hat by Petite Knit and it is in the colorway Macross. I did take some of this skein to put into my um, to put into my cushion, but I figured because I got about 110 grams and I used about 10 grams for the blanket for each uh, color that we would be more than enough um, to use up the rest of the skein for this beautiful hat. And I can't wait to have the finished hat and wear it. I don't know what it is with green hats. I just love the idea and have many more to come probably <laughs> in the in the in the future. I'm gonna show you another green DK weight that I got in with the intent of making another hat with it. Um, oh yeah, I just found the beginning of my second um, six ply sock. This is just gonna be my easy knitting for on the go. So I have that. That is some more progress and let me just see i think this one has my yeah this one has the project that i've been mostly working on during barcelona knits this is the traveler crew neck by andrea maori and i have made some good progress on this um i have put in a progress marker so you can see and uh, I already love the amount of ease this has. So even with my um, with my bus to conference, and I have a smaller um, waist, obviously it's going to be going to be cropped. And so I guess this is going to have a good fifteen, maybe twenty centimeters of ease. And I love that. This is my first um, bottom up sweater construction that I ever attempted and I love the yarn. <laughs> this is um, Pearl Soho's Goodwill and this is a beautiful two-ply um, American wool I think it is and it's a beautiful brown color. Let me show you. Um, so this is all I've got left from my first skein and this is how much I've knitted up so far. I gotta cake up another um, another ball soon but this is also something that I really don't want to rush on it's just going to be um, knitted on whenever and if I have some more progress I'm going to show you so far I love it um, sorry I'm just trying to power through this section so because I know I have quite a few acquisitions in this video my focus knit these last couple of days has been my Traveler Cardigan. This is by Ozetta and I've made quite significant progress on this mostly because I really want Sash need more cardigans and secondly because I'm doing a tiny less informal uh, knit along with my friend Venetia from the Woolly Worker here on Instagram. No, here on YouTube and on Instagram and some reasons of why I like cows and tests is because they keep me accountable for finishing stuff and I don't like that with all of my projects like I said I want to also be able to put some socks away and then come back to them because I have realized in the past that this works for me and I will finish them I've never not finished a pair of socks and I've never had um, except for a project that I will be showing you because I put it back on the needles I've only ever had one UFO and now I'm knitting on it again so I think that I'm not prone to not finishing. So still, I like the accountability of finishing stuff. Not too far in the, like in the distance. I just, yeah. And because we have a call tomorrow uh, on Sunday, I wanted to get ahead to where she was <laughs> because she's finished the body and I am pretty close to doing the ribbing. I have 10 more rounds. Of the body and then I have about I think five rows 
oh, it's not rounds, right? It's rows. I have 10 rows of body and then five rows of ribbing, I think, and another buttonhole, and this will be done. The body will be done. And then I can maybe sew on the buttons right before we call tomorrow afternoon, and then we can cast on the sleeves together, maybe. <laughs> so this is it. I hope you can see the amount of progress I made. This is also honestly <laughs> due to and thanks to uh, Mia from Knitting Grace. I've uh, mentioned her recommendation to me um, in my last video. Sorry, I've just lost two stitches, which I will be picking back up um, to pre-wind my yarn. I had done that in like a way of pre-pulling it and then having some yarn on my yarn cakes. But honestly, pre-winding it, and now that I, now that she told me, I've watched like three How to Knit with Unspun videos. That one from her, which is really good. The one from Will and Twine, and I think there is another person, I'm not sure who did another one. But Will and Twine and Knit and Grace, yeah, they both did a very informative format on how to knit with unspun yarn and so I've learned so much through that already <laughs> I feel like and um, it's been a super interesting and fun learning curve and yeah I'm I'm really happy with it so far honestly I was a bit not scared but I had heard some things about the body being a bit too long uh, my friend Lydia had knitted this had knitted the whole body and then frogged the whole thing again in a beautiful um, natural dyed yarn from Scotland, I think. And uh, But she unraveled the whole thing again because she was so unhappy with where the cardigan hit her waist. I, I think, I'm, I hope I'm not saying this wrong. And so I told Vanessa, being like, we, I think we might need to be wary of where this hits our bodies. And obviously all bodies are different, but like, mine is probably going to turn out quite um, cropped in a way and in a way that I really will like I think so I'm not sure if it has to do with our row gauge being different I think my uh, gauge was actually pretty bang on with the recommended needles although I have realized that if I'm being a bit more conscious of the unspun not breaking which the pre-winding has really helped with um, and if it's breaking like I said I'm just bit splicing it but yeah I think it might be due to the row gauge uh, or I'm not actually not sure maybe this is also going to hit me at a point where my friend would find that awkward for herself so I'm not sure I think it's really interesting to and that I'm doing so much of like reading other people's Ravelry project pages and I know Venetia has um, because she has seen on other project pages I think and in the pattern and then me telling her about Lydia's experience she has taken away some of the rows in between the buttons I was too lazy to do that math honestly I really didn't want to I just wanted to follow the pattern and so I did and I think I'm going to be really happy with it like I said I think the the length so far is pretty good and it's gonna be another maybe this this much maybe this much added to it and I really hope to finish this tonight maybe tomorrow morning and then like I said cast on the sleeves together with Renicia and finish the thing soon because I really could use another this is going to be such a warm <laughs> um this is going to be such a warm cardigan obviously with it being unspun but yeah I'm really looking forward to it also wearing something that we have in the shop. Um, let me just get my, okay, you can see here, I have pre-wound, oops, pre-wound some more skeins. At first I was doing smaller skeins, uh, but now I've, I've continued to make bigger ones. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to show you the label. Um, I've mentioned this before, this is by Rain Cloud and Stage, the unspun. 
and I hope this was focusing, but um, yeah, we have this at the shop in Marburg. So the Strick Verliebt shop, we have this yarn and I always like wearing something when I'm working at the shop and being like, oh yeah, because people actually come up being like, I love that sweater. Where, where did you get it from? What's the designer? And I have some sweaters where I could be going to like, oh yeah, this is the heavy merino and this is sweater number 23. And I can sell you the pattern via the in-store rubbery um, uh, function. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lot nicer to be able to reference that or being like, with this, I could be like, oh yeah, we have something simil similar. But yeah, obviously it's nice to wear something that we also sell at the shop. And I need more cardigans. So I had to grab this because I had forgotten it in my bedroom. But yeah, the infamous <laughs> Barbara Shawl is back on the needles. And I really hope to not find another mistake because otherwise I might just throw it out the window. <laughs> because this really, uh, I don't know if you remember the episode where I talked about heading, heading, having made about this much more progress and then realizing that I made a mistake that was frustrating me too much to ignore it and then basically redoing the whole thing. <laughs> no, not the whole thing, but I, I frocked quite a significant amount, maybe like 15 to 20 centimeters and uh, wound it all back up into this awful looking skein and now I have recast it on. I don't know if you're able to tell, uh, but I've made this much progress since putting it back on needles um, and yeah I just want to get more progress on this and hopefully someday actually wear it because I think it would actually make a super cute accessory and a really nice shawl this is made in the um oh yeah it's Pernella by Folkalana and it's in the color chai uh, which is very monochromatic I don't not sure if that's the correct word but like it is very similar to my hair color I think um, but yeah it's back on the needles guys it is back on the needles and it will get worked on I promise <laughs> that's like just a promise to myself because I want the finished project it is not my favorite um, pattern not because it's not a great pattern but because you'll have to count to a it's not like one two three it's, it's a bigger number and then change something in your making it's a paid for pattern so i don't want to give too um away too much but it's like a higher number than what i'm comfortable with counting in my head all the time whilst knitting actually with this cowl i four is like the highest number i want to be counting to in my head while doing a ribbing like everything over that is just difficult <laughs> and it's like it's not as mindless as I would want a mindless project to be but it's also not like a cable or like lace project where I'd be okay with doing a bit more involved knitting somehow but yeah it's back on the needles I frogged the part that was pissing me off because I had done like made a mistake in the in counting my stitches and I had two little stitches and some of the repeats. And so it's back on the needles, it's getting worked on and I hope to be finishing it maybe by the end of the year. That will be really nice. We'll see. Okay, so I got uh, quite a bit of stash enhancement. I'll be going from the easiest thing to talk about to Barcelona knits at the end. And then I've got two giveaways. This is not gonna be in the title. This is just for the people that actually watch these videos. I don't want any I don't know, people that look out for giveaways uh, here. I just want you, my friends, my favorite friends, the community to get back something from supporting me and my goals of sharing my knits, which I love now for over a year. And I'm so happy that you're with me. So let me share my, so the thing that I got in the sock swap for the winter wishes sock swap from La Mercerie. Um, I was, whoops, I was paired with a lovely lady from Germany and we were in contact before sending out the stuff and we actually, uh, I thought, got along super uh, great and um, we were talking about some of the stuff that we would 
like to receive, some colors that we liked. And then from that starting point, we decided on what we would get for each other. We also said that stash yarn would be fine. And yeah, she <laughs> sent me also, except for the yarn, she sent me some goodies, some chocolates. I'm, I'm really thankful for that. Another the tiny stitch marker. I've got it all in my making um, chest of drawers. So I don't have it with me. I'm just focusing on the yarn today, but thank you so much, um, Patricia. And yeah, so the yarn that she got me was from Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which I was like, about when I saw it, I, I didn't realize, I didn't, I had mentioned that I liked her, but I didn't expect anything like that. Like I thought she would also pick something. I, I gave her something speckled, like really fun colors from Little Fibers, but also a sock set. So she also gave me a little, a little mini with it. And this is the Hazel colorway. This is the Cheviot and Jacobs. Uh, and then some Corridale sock in the mystery bundle set. So I don't think these two match. I'm not sure if she got any of those from her stash too, which like I said, would be completely fine. I'm so happy to have them. And I, I am going to show them up close to you now. So um, we bonded over really liking Will and Twine stuff. And so I think she parted ways with this or I think she got this and maybe had this in stash I'm not sure and I I don't care love it and these will make some beautiful socks possibly socks maybe color work in the future and I will be holding on to them um I don't have any plans yet I think they can stay asleep in my stash for a little bit longer and one day I'll make something nice with them so thank you again to my sock swap buddy and to La Mercerie for organizing it. It was really nice receiving and gifting and sending out some Advent and pre-Christmas. And if you don't celebrate the holidays, like just end of the year countdown stuff. So yeah, I was really happy to receive those. This is actually not easy to show. These are my, this is one of my Advent calendars. And from what I can, sorry for the crinkling. I think from what I can feel, this must be two mini skeins. This actually ripped a bit, so we're not peeking in there. Is that one, two, three, and four? And I'm really looking forward to opening them on each of the weekends and Advent. So this is not much to show you guys, um, but it's my. Phoebe and Mercy um, mini advent and I'm really excited for it. And so the next little thing that I got isn't actually a little thing, but a pretty big deal. Um, if you've been here for some time, you know that I have um, knitted the April cardigan. I've actually made a whole pattern kind of like roundup vlog about it because it was my first actual uh, cardigan that I made. And I had put, um, some pigeon and wishes buttons on it and i had also gotten some more for some other projects and then i had been eyeing up their fabric for some time so i really like the shop i've been following them um there were actually some people that also got these buttons because they saw them on my project and um bought them because of that and shared with me which i which i love if you if you do get inspired by any of the things that I'm sharing, if you're um, sharing them with me then as well, because then I get inspired and it's like, it's a cycle of inspiration, which I love. And so actually they got in contact with me and asked me if I wanted to try out some more of their goodies. And I was like, yes. Um, like I said, if there's brands that I've been buying from before with my own money, or that I have been eyeing up and wanted to test out, I'm very willing to take on even unpaid corporations in a way. So uh, collaborations, if they don't ask me to say anything specific about them, but I wanted to highlight them. And I actually forgot in my last episode. So these goodies have been uh, with me for 
some weeks. I've just been too scared to cut into my fabric yet, but I will be in the future. So I've gotten um, a wonderful mix of fabrics. Actually, this one I had been eyeing up on their Etsy for some time. Um, but like I said, because I was not sure what to make from it, um, yeah, I had I hadn't ordered it yet. And when they asked me if they could send me some to test out, I was really happy about that. And so I want to make um, a couple of things. <laughs> I would love to make a vest, kind of like a, a quilted vest um, and a top, like a camisole, maybe even a long sleeve top. I'm not sure. Eventually I would like to make some trousers and maybe like dungarees. Oh my God, I saw that amazing sewing dungarees pattern. <laughs> I'm always like searching on Etsy for stuff like that. And I've also been wanting to make some of my own project bags. And so this is going to be used up and making its way into all my projects uh, that I'll be sewing for the next couple of months. I'm trying to be kind with myself for not knowing and getting and being able to do everything from the get-go because I tend to have very high expectations of myself, which then make me get frustrated quite easily. But yeah. They did also send me some really nice cards uh, showing off the things that were in there. So I'm going to show you their um, details. And so yeah, the person I was in, in touch with is Steph and the owners are called Megan and Yuhao, Yuhao, I think is his name. So, and then I got a huge collection of buttons. I was so thankful, but also a tiny bit overwhelmed because I'm like, how am I ever going to, to make these into patterns? Uh, but I love them and I can't wait to eventually over the time use all of them. So yeah, they were so incredibly kind and generous and actually put in some button kind of like cards twice. So I've got these beautiful, I think they're called chai something. Let me, chai latte in a 25 millimeter um, size. Uh, and they're beautiful. They're really similar to what I used for my April cardigan. And like I said, I've got two sets of this and I probably won't will only ever use one and so this is uh something that I want to share with you guys so sharing the love that Pigeon and Wishes has offered and extended to me I want to share it with you guys so I'm giving away this button set and I hope one of you guys will be really happy to receive this um, I've actually written down what I would like you guys to do to take part in this giveaway. So let me just check. I will have um, in my description box the rules for the giveaway. So it's pretty easy. You should be 18. You should be um, so of, of legal age to take part in giveaways. This is open internationally. Uh, I hoped that this amount of uh, postage will be will be fine to send out anywhere. Um, I know that it's sometimes a bit frustrating that I can only offer uh, postage to European countries just because otherwise it wouldn't be feasible for me to, um, yeah, just pay that amount of shipping. But in this case, I think it would be um, fairly uh, doable to pay the postage even to, I don't know, Australia or the United States. And I know lots of you guys uh, who watch this video are in not from the EU. So yeah, um, one of you guys will receive this and I would like you to, first of all, obviously be a follower of this channel since this is a giveaway to one of my viewers. And then comment with your favorite cardigan pattern or the pattern that you would use these on. So that could be the same, but it doesn't have to be the same. But if you have, for example, the April cardigan by Petite Net in mind, and you would love to use them for that, go comment that. And uh, I assume if you're putting a cardigan pattern that you love that you want to take part in this giveaway. I will be 
announcing the winner of the giveaway in my next episode. And again, I wanted to say thank you so much to Pigeon and Wishes for being incredible uh, and supportive in my making journey. I've, uh, I will have their links all down below and you might see some of the buttons uh, coming up again in the future. I might have also, or I might also be giving some of these away in my personal life to people. Um, there were some more um, button cards that I had also bought previously before with my own money. And so, yeah, I'm not giving away too much more because the people might be watching, but yeah. If you would like to win this, check out the rules again and then like the video if you liked it <laughs> and comment down below. But that's not all. Uh, this felt like I was saying goodbye. I'm not I'm not saying goodbye. Because I also went to Barcelona Knits and I bought some stuff there. I did post a little vlog, but it was really more of a mini vlog. I wasn't talking to, to the camera much because as I had already also mentioned, this was more so a work trip. Nonetheless, because I was there with my boss, Melanie from Strickverliebt in Marburg, and we were looking out to meet some vendors that we would were thinking to bring on in our shop. And um, obviously on the side, I was still doing some personal shopping and some vlogging, but I didn't feel, I didn't have the time to speak to the camera uh, too much. And then I was meeting so many of you guys. I was blown away by the amount of people that were like, hi Marlene, I watch your vlogs or I watch your videos. And I was like, what's your name? I want to know more about the people that I'm meeting because obviously this way around sometimes can feel a bit like one way thing, but then in the comments and on Instagram and in, in my DMs and on these incredible events, it doesn't feel that one way anymore, but, but it feels more like a community. I was also meeting some Instagram knitting friends that I had made or test knitted with. Um, I hope that they're also going to be putting out their videos soon because um, we're going to all be in each other's videos at some point, which was so fun. I think I got all the stuff that I got day one, pretty sure. Yeah, I got one skein the second day. Um, let me just grab something and start with that. I got a sheep. <laughs> That's what I was saying to everyone who I was passing that weekend. Sorry for the crinkling noise. I got my own little baby Kent Romney. <laughs> this is 300 grams, so it must be 12 ounces, I think, of Kent Romney. I started spinning with it, but I don't want to take off my bobbin, and it's just been a couple of minutes of like trying to spin this. It's not really easy because it has these like bobbles in it. Maybe it should have been carded another time. There's also some vegetable, how, how do you call that? Like stuff stuck in it, a bit of that still. I'm not sure if you can see. So this is probably going to be a bit of a rougher spin. Let me be honest, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. My plan would be to do two, uh, to ply two singles and get about a sport to DK weight to then hold it with a surrey or a mohair, silk mohair or silk surrey to do kind of either, depending on how much yardage and like whatever weight I in the end will be able to get to do anything between a vest or a slip over to a sweater or a cardigan or a jacket. Um, this, like I said, is 300 grams. I know that there's patterns out there for which 300 grams for a sport to decay plus some sort of lace weight would suffice um, for like a medium. Although I, I'm more often so knit a large, so four to five in most patterns is what I knit for myself. But yeah, I, it was 30 euros. So that wasn't much, in my opinion, for spinning fiber. And she, so her name was Tina. It was really nice to meet her as well. Um, she, I'm, I'm going to link everyone that I mentioned, obviously, in the description box down below. But she was also, I think, from Berlin. Uh, and she was doing so many international shows. 
and she still had like a small um, roundup of products. Great products, but it was a small, uh, in my opinion, small booth. And she was the only one who had fibers in the entire festival, as far as I could tell, which I found to be a bit sad. But at least I got what I wanted, <laughs> which was my first entire sweater quantity of fiber, which I will be spending on for the foreseeable future. If you have any tips, if you're like, Marlene, you're doing it wrong. You have to do X, Y, Z before doing this and that. I know that I'm jumping in like cold turkey. I am inspired by Ariel from Aries Knits, who's like also just spinning her first um, sweater quantity, but with a uh, different fiber. Uh, and I'm inspired by all the amazing women on the internet who just spin. Like they don't doubt themselves and they just spin. I love that. And we'll see if this works out, right? At the end of the day, I don't have much to lose, I don't think. So, yeah. This was an, a very interesting purchase. And let me next move on to a booth that was by a local, whoop, by a local knitting or local yarn shop, which is called La 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 Nu, La La Na Lu, La Na Na Lu, yeah. I think Lana in um, Spanish is wool. So I really fell in love when seeing this. And when I saw this little guy, I was like, yeah, I need him. And then what really uh, sold me on this was this <laughs> tattoo that said, knit fast, die warm. And yeah. It was only five euros and um, as we all know, you can never have too many tote bags, which then double up as like a traveling bag and a knitting bag and a sock bag and a whatever bag. And I love this little guy. I didn't get any wool from them, although they looked really intriguing. I had a really nice dark green color in my hands, but I tried on one of their beanies. <laughs> and it was too scratchy for my liking. And I didn't have any other ideas at that moment in time. I was too focused on my uh, work for the shop and like scouting what we wanted to, uh, who we wanted to talk to and what we wanted to look at. So I was just like, I need that back. And I grabbed it and I paid for it. And then I went on my way. So we went through the two um, bigger rooms, we went through them twice uh, that first day. We were really focused on what we wanted to do for the shop, uh, but I was still shopping on the side because I just found everything that I was looking for. And like I said, then and the second day, I just got uh, one single skein um, and was more so talking to people and like figuring out how we wanted to approach some of the vendors that we wanted to get to the shop. Um, and yeah, another thing that I got was this beautiful bag from Biche Bouche and it is a sweater quantity of the Le Petit Silk and Mohair which is a 30 to 70 Marbury Silk and Super Kit Mohair mixture and it has 210 meters and it is this beautiful blue. I got this to hold with my sweater quantity of the speakeasy but in the oopsie um i got from sorella that is more so on the um purpley leaning side and a bit darker but i wanted to kind of like take out the navy aspects of it with this mohair and so this is going to be held with that speakeasy colorway for some sweater i am still not sure which sweater to make maybe i'm even gonna make a cardigan with it and maybe the eva cardigan because that is just a blue cardigan in my head um, maybe even a stripeless leith cardigan maybe i already own that pattern i'm not sure um some sort of pattern maybe the daft days uh it's just been released today or yesterday i think uh, as a um as a charity uh, release so if you want to you can check out that one at uh, Rebecca Close site it has it is designed to be an advent pattern but it can also be 
uh, single color pattern and I like the kind of motif on it. So somewhere in the future, there is going to be a dark blue sweater or cardigan in my future. And I think it's nice to have this like very concise or like very straightforward color palette and then break it up every once in a while. And I think this dark blue <laughs> project will be my break up, like breaking it up, break up my palette project. But I really obviously love the project bag. Like, you know, I love project bags. <laughs> And this was not an exception and I really wanted to get it. And this was not too expensive in my opinion. Like I got the fingering weight at a discounted price, I think for $80 and this I got for 50 euros. Obviously 130 is a lot of money for a, for a wool for a garment, but still it is very high quality and hand dyed. And like I said, obviously everyone's budget is different and everyone's ability or wants to spend money on knitting is different but like knitting is my number one hobby it's the thing that I spend most of my money on and um, I have I will be wearing my hand knits forever I feel like I've never since I mean I haven't been knitting for years I have been knitting for years but like I haven't been knitting for decades um, so I will only be able to judge that in a couple of years, I think, but so far none of my hand knits have suffered any holes or like any incidents. So I think if I st stay with, with what is working for me, I will be able to wear all my handmade items for the rest of my life, basically, or give them away if they don't suit me anymore. And so in my opinion, even though I think it is really important to have more affordable options for people and for me as well, but for me, it's worth it. I know this is a lot of money to spend on yarn and um, I know just getting to the festival was expensive. Like I said, I was so fortunate to have it as a work trip. So I did not have to pay for the accommodation and the flights um, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how to put it because I know how privileged of a position I am speaking from but also I still want to share and this is not me bragging about how much money I spend. I hope you, you all get that. Um, next up I went to Sock Una Troca uh, and they had these amazing, I think this is such a great concept, these amazing 50 gram skeins of fingering sock yarn. It's called the Weekender and this is Gaudiniana, Gaudiniana, Gaudiniana. Sorry, sometimes I say stuff uh, many a times and it doesn't really make it better because I do not improve on my pronunciation. But yeah, these are um, sock una troca and this was a specific Barcelona colorway, obviously because of Gaudi and this is the BCN Knits colorway. So this was the show colorway, which I thought was so nice to have. Um, obviously you don't have to get any show colorways and if they're not to your taste, you shouldn't. In some ways you'll regret not getting them like me with Autumn Hydran Hydrangeas from um, La Bien Ami. Uh, but with others, you thought they were beautiful, but not so much your taste. Like. At Flock there was also a Miss Babs colorway and I thought it was beautiful but it wasn't as much my colors. This is my colors. It is a beautiful speckled yarn. To be honest I also had another yarn like looking at it but it was only one mini skein left or 50 gram skein left and my friend had grabbed it before me and I'm happy for her that she got it because then I might be able to look at it even though I didn't get it myself which is always a good thing. Um, and yeah, so I got this, but this is not gonna stay on its own. Although I, for myself, being a size EU 38 to 39, I can get away with like 60 grams for a sock, usually. Yeah, I think with these, I have um, used up about 28 grams for the main color and about six grams for the highlight toe and heel. So that would add up having like a bit of a buffer to 60 grams 
for the whole main color and about 12 to 15 grams for the contrast color. So if I swapped out the cuff as well and having three contrast colors, I would get away with 50 grams for sure. I am not a shorty person. You can make shorties with these 50 gram skeins, but I don't think I'm a shorty person. The idea of them doesn't really appeal to me. Um, and so I got some mini skeins to have some highlights. And the way I like to go about it, because I've been asked that in the past, and I get so flattered by people complimenting my uh, color choosing skills. <laughs> um, but honestly, it's just what I like, I go for. And then sometimes I look into my closet being like, I've got, like, I've already got three of that. Let's pick something else that I like, right? Like, I wouldn't want to make four beige cardigans. But then I would like to maybe do a gray or like a red or a green or like a blue one. Stuff like that. And so, but something that is really interesting to me when, especially when talking to customers at the shop and helping them decide on colors, when it comes to variegated skeins, I really like to, if they want to pair it with something tonal or other colors, I'm like, what is your favorite thing about the variegated skein? And uh, I think you might be able to tell, obviously green and orange are like my two favorite colors next to brown and beige <laughs> and gray. Um, but like actual colors, these are my favorite colors. And you can find them in the speckles as well. And I think that is what makes a color combination really good. Is if you can find, for example, the green, you can find it here. And a lot of the orange you can find here, for example. And this way, I think these are going to be such fun colors. Obviously, I didn't get to see any of the Gaudi houses this time around, but I've been to Barcelona before in 2019. And I did see uh, the Casa Batlo. I saw uh, in Park Guell some of the things I think had been inspired by him as well. And I think I went to a Miro exhibition as well. And a really good exhibition on feminist history. Don't know how I got there, but I mean, obviously I know how I got there, but... There are some really great museums in Barcelona as well. If you're not there for a yarn exhibition, which takes up all your energy and focus, you should definitely check some of them out. But I'll have it in my sock, eventually, the Gaudi experience too. And I really like this combination. They will make some really great socks. Yeah. Okay, second to last yarny thing was this Stormy Blend by Lani Vendel. My colleague or boss Melanie and I were smitten by this yarn brand to say the least. We really liked what they're offering. This is an Italian yarn and fiber brand, a duo, two women, Stefania and Julia, who were on top of making amazing yarn, incredible kind, incredibly, incredibly kind and had so many really great samples. I love a good sample in a booth or in a yarn shop for that matter. Like great samples make the yarn buying experience for me. Like they make or break if I go out of the shop with a new yarn quantity, to be quite honest. And like I told you, I really wanted another green hat as if I did not have enough green yarn to plan for hat knits or even knitting on a green hat but like macros and these this like foresty walden green couldn't be more different let me tell you by a person who hyper fixates on tones of green and the, how different they are this is different and so this is a two ply dk weight i i'm sure you we're able to notice I love a two-ply yarn. And this is Brogan, Wool, and Alpaca, 70-30 mix. 
Brugan is probably a Italian like region. Um, I should have looked this up more, but this is a rare and local fiber and they have a an awesome um, yeah, ethic behind their brand. This is non-super wash, null and free. You should def definitely check them out. They had some cute merch as well and some other really great composition like um, other options but a stormy blend I thought was so cute uh, and yeah they had really nice samples I will be putting in some pictures they had the Paul Klee sweater which I have been eyeing up and they had like a sweater um, bundle for it already so you didn't have to pick and choose which I always find is fun but could also be difficult if you have so many different colors their booth which is one of my favorites and the, the women the two women were also two of my favorite people at the festival and yeah so i'm going to make another hat with this um and yeah really love this so the last yarny thing that i got was a bit of a hand dyed speckly splurge but this is not just for me one of these skeins will be gifted to one of my Ko-Fi supporters. Let me talk about the yarn first. This is the only skein that I got at the second day. It is called Better Than Love Silky Sock Hand Dyed. This is Merino Superwash Silk and Recycled Nylon. And this is gorgeous. I am not sure if I will have to make something else than a sock with this just because it's so special and like silky maybe a little scarf or like a a top I'm not sure if it's enough it has like 425 meters but it's it's gorgeous um and the brand sorry for not mentioning this before is El Robledal de la Santa these were two men um who owned a um mohair goat farm and they were incredibly incredibly kind so this one I got the second day because I got <laughs> jealous because my my boss picked it out and she was like oh I'm gonna get that I'm like I have to have it as well and I didn't feel that the complete like the weekend was far from any feelings like that but that moment I was like okay I have to copy you and she was like that's okay we can have match matching socks um, but any like other than that, I didn't feel any. Ooh, I need to get that, but I don't have any space in my suitcase because I I brought a big suitcase so we can both put all our stuff in there. We knew that we wanted to maybe try out some wool dreamers as well. So I'm obviously not showing you all the things because some might be um, spoilers for what we might get into the shop or some things my 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 coworker uh, got and I didn't pay for with my own money. So yeah, but what I'm showing you is what, what what I'm gonna knit with and what I mostly got for myself. And yeah, so El Robleda de la Santa again. Uh, this was what I got the first day. Um, like I said, we made our second round. I think I got all of the things that I wanted and was looking forward to. So I got another skein of so two more skein of sock yarns, but this one is the BFL sock, uh, which is a blue face Leicester and nylon mix. And this is blind side. And this other one is a fine sock. So this is extra fine merino and nylon, and this is called A Nossa Terra. And like I said, one of you guys and i'm actually not able to pick and choose which one i want to keep I, I love bfl but i also love the blue speckles in this one so i'm not sure which one i can part ways with i want to keep both but that's not that's not why i bought both of them <laughs> i bought one of them to give away to one of my ko-fi supporters i did mention this before i have set up a goal on my Ko-Fi to have my viewers, if they want to, are able to support my journey on getting to more yarny events in the upcoming year and vlog from them and get some special goodies from them to give back. 
So I've not found a perfect way to, I don't know, communicate this. So if you've got any ideas, I would be really interested to hear about them. I have been thinking about doing a Discord server, which I have found really, really um, great when I still was a PhD student and I organized a PhD writing group on there. So that was really nice. Um, I was thinking about doing like an Instagram chat group just for everyone who is in the Ko-Fi supporting my goal and wanting to maybe get more, I don't know, information, getting to be part of the giveaway. Like I said, I'm not sure yet which one it will be, but it will be one of those who is going to be given away to one of my supporters. If you've not supported me yet, you can do so by just the cost of a cup of coffee, which I think is a really nice saying and I'm not sure I'm pretty sure I didn't come up with that but Venetia has been saying it in like a sing-songy way so I've been uh, saying it the same way as she has but yeah so I've not found a way which is like perfect for how would you say that like organizing a giveaway like this let me just put it like this it would be best if I can see your um at least part of your name over on Ko-Fi if you do uh, to choose to support me there. I will be announcing the winner too uh, from all the people who have gifted me or donated and supported me in my goal yet. So everyone who supported me there for the last couple of months to when I film the next episode in like two weeks. Um, so everyone who is supporting me there will be entered into the giveaway. If someone wins and they don't want it, I will be drawing again. But I suppose I'm, I'm not yet thinking about that because who wouldn't want like a beautiful <laughs> skein of hand dyed um, yarn. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I just wanted to find a way to extra um, to kind of like, especially to my supporters in this goal, share the love and the the sentiment of being able to travel to see more of the yarny world which is so colorful and so big and so amazing and i hope you all whoever wins this really likes it um it's it's a bit of a now i feel a bit frazzled at the end of this <laughs> at the end of this episode and i still have three other things to share from Barcelona Knits. I'm sorry, I thought I was done. I, I got this little pouch from, um, I think they were called Yarnitas. They were really nice. They also had some beautiful yarn, but I decided on this one because it, I thought it was meant to be because of the M. And I've been carrying uh, some of my yarny things, but also some tissues and my headphones and my keys in this. So this has been great to travel with, my power bank even, and some of my cords. So really practical. From Senorita Yarn, I got these, I got these, um, what would you call them? Needle stoppers, which reminded me, obviously they reminded me of flowers. There are flowers. So I thought they were really cute. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm really frazzled. And from a wonderful uh, viewer, um, who is Karin, I think it's, Ka is it Karen or Karin? However, thank you so much for this wonderful stitch marker. Let me put this away so it doesn't fall down. Thank you so much for the um, for the cute stitch marker or progress maker. I will probably use this for. So now that I've shared everything that I've gotten, everything that I've experienced, obviously I can't be telling you all the tiniest little details that happened, but it was a wonderful weekend. And I hope the giveaway rules kind of make sense. I just want to give back. And I, I don't think I'm the best at... <laughs> grasping how best to do it yet if you do have any ideas on how to better do it in the future to have like um, maybe a shared community of the Ko-Fi supporters I don't want to open up another thing I don't want to and maybe that would be the best thing to like have a YouTube 
channel members or a Patreon or um, like Nitty Nanny does these like membership things where she then puts or get gets the people uh, to to a Discord server. But obviously it's her full time job doing that and she has the support by her husband. And I feel like that would be a bit too much for me right this instance. So I'm just really, really thankful for everyone who chooses to support my content in any kind of way, shape or form. And so um, I will be closing this video by saying that. I have a couple of plans of what I want to knit in the next weeks. I was st speaking about my hollow v-neck. I'm going to be also knitting on my traveler cardigan and crew neck. Um, and then I want to cast on a balaclava number one by my favorite things knitwear. And I wanted to be using my Kinross four ply and some leftover Kremke kit silk. So this is going to make, I think it's going to make a beautiful, really like dark brown balaclava for a great contrast between my, my hair color and these, yeah, this balaclava. I wanted to have one um, for some time now. I think the look is really cute and I hope it looks good on me. I'm not sure if it will. Um, and that one I think my friend made before, so I trust her that it's a good enough pattern. And then I will also be doing some more hottie sweaters. I think I've mentioned before that I made one before myself. This is also with the Drops Boucle. I've had this since making this and this hasn't held up the best, but it's, um, it's usable. It's doing its intended thing and purpose. So I will be making one for my mom as a Christmas present. And then I have some Gepard Boucle that I don't want to get up and get now, but I will be making another tiny one for myself. Um, I've had some really kind people share their project notes with me on how they adjusted stitch quant quantity and such for the tinier version. So we will be making that for myself with a good part boucle as well. So these are just some, some small plants. Um, I want to be swatching for my Mudo as well in December, but I also don't want to put too much on myself. Now, I just want to be enjoying my making. I've been really strong not applying to any more test knit. I'm test knit free as of now, and I don't want to change that until, I don't know, maybe the next year, maybe February. I want to be focusing on what I have on my list, and that is already enough, I think. I hope that I didn't forget anything super interesting, but I think this video is long enough already, so if you do want to participate in any of the giveaways go check out the description box for the rules i have all of my projects and hopefully all or most of what i've been talking about linked there as well and i hope you have an amazing week you get lots of knitting time lots of making time i hope you're taking care of yourselves and others around you and i'll see you next time and at vlogmas bye